How does music affect short-term memory? My hypothesis was that I think short-term memory will be the best without music, but the column music selection without words will produce the next best results. In this article from simplypsychology.org, the three key aspects of short-term memory were discussed. Limited capacity, limited duration, and encoding. It has been found that most people can store between five and nine items in their short-term memory, However, it is hypothesized that it could be a large amount of information, not just five to nine individual pieces of information, if we find ways to chunk it together or find relationships between the items inf of information. Thus, some words in my experiment were related, and an average of seven words were expected to be remembered for each experiment. The duration of short-term memory has been found to be approximately 15 to 30 seconds. The longer the delay, the less information is recalled. In my experiment, the subjects were asked to immediately recall the information. Encoding is the process of processing the information and sometimes repeating the information verbally, called acoustic encoding. This can transform short-term memories into long-term memories. The part of your brain that is involved in learning and memory is the hippocampus, located in the forebrain, specifically the limbic system. Additionally, your cerebral cortex is involved. The cerebral cortex is the part of your brain that thinks, and controls memory and language, among other things. Specifically, for my experiment, the temporal lobe is involved in hearing the music, and the occipital lobe is involved in reading the words. Short-term memory and my experiment also incorporate both sensation and perception. Sensation is when our sensory receptors and nervous system receive and represent stimulus energy, or in my experiment, how the subjects respond to the music they hear and the words that they see. Perception is when our brains organize and interpret the sensory information based on our previous experiences and expectations. This is represented in my experiment by how the subjects interpret and react to the different music types based on what they already have experienced and what they expect from a certain genre of music. Several experiments have already been done testing the effect of different types of background music on short-term memory. In my experiment, the effect of different types of music on short-term memory were tested, as well as the presence of music versus the absence of music and that effect on memory. Each subject performed the experiment with four different song clips and the control, or no music. My intent was to simulate different study environments and determine which is the best and which is the worst for memory. Therefore, I tested 16 different high school age kids. For each experiment, the subjects were given one of these 15 numbered cards, each with 15 random words printed on it. They were also given a blank note card and a pen. For the control trial, they were instructed to study the 15 words for exactly one minute, and then to turn the numbered card over and write on the blank card as many words as they could remember. This was all done in complete silence. Then, for the music trials, they listened to one minute clips of songs, each representing a different type of music, and to do the same as they did with the control trial. The songs represented calm music with and without words, as well as upbeat music, also with and without words. The order of the trials, as well as the numbered cards given, were completely randomized for each experiment. Each trial was exactly one minute of studying time. Here are samples of the four different songs that I played, as well as video samples of the subjects that I tested. a good year What qualifies a good year is changing We've got each other a job and we're staying alive
To calculate the results, each subject's note cards that they wrote what they could remember on were checked against the corresponding numbered cards, and the number of correct words recalled out of the 15 on the cards are given here for each subject in each trial. Here are the results for all 16 subjects, shown in graph form. The x-axis is the trial, or whether it was the control or which music trial it was. Additionally, the y-axis is the number of words that they got correct out of 15. Here are all of the results for the control test, or silent, showing an average of 9.34 words remembered correctly. Here are the results for the calm music with no words test, showing an average of 8.44 words remembered correctly per person. These are the results for the calm music with words test, showing an average of 9 words remembered correctly per person. The results for the upbeat music with no words show an average of 8.56 words remembered correctly per person. Finally, the results for the upbeat music with words show an average of only 7.13 words remembered correctly per person. Here are those averages again. This shows that the subjects on average were able to remember the most correct words in the control trial or without any music, followed closely behind by the calm music with words trial. Additionally, these averages show that the upbeat music with words proved to be the worst, showing only 7.13 words on average remembered correctly. My experiment partially proved and supported my previous hypothesis by showing that the subjects were able to recall the greatest number of words correctly on average in complete silence and without any auditory distractions. However, I hypothesized also that the calm music without words would produce the next best results, when in fact it was the upbeat music without words on average. My results also proved that high school kids are able to remember more than the previously guessed seven items of information. My experiment supports that the best study environment is complete silence, and listening to upbeat music with words is the worst environment for your short-term memory. Some sources of error include varying volumes of music, as well as not knowing what the subjects usually study to or, what, or which environment they have trained themselves to succeed in. Additionally, more trials should be held to further prove this conclusion. The existing research using similar methods shown before had different results. The first experiment showed heavy metal music allowing the greatest memorization, followed respectively by rap, country, silence, baroque, techno, and classic rock. The second experiment showed that classical music, represented in my experiment by the calm music without words, allowed the subjects to memorize the most words, followed respectively by rap, jazz, and rock. These experiments were conducted in similar situations and with similar methods, and all showed very different results. Despite what one might think, perhaps it is possible to train your brain to succeed by remembering the most information in any environment just simply through repetition.